Hello, hi, and welcome to today's Unity tutorial. Last time we have created a cooldown for our jump so that we cannot permanently jump. We have 1.2 seconds currently between jumps that we have to wait. Today we are going to add a uh, cooldown slider that actually shows us the progress of the cooldown. So we will add sliders and graphs, the first UI elements. Therefore, I've got the project open the status from the last time. I did not continue with anything on this. And what we want is a slider on our player element. Right? We could make it a global slider that just is on top of the screen, always in the same position. But I think it is nicer to have it somewhere with the player so we can see the current status. Of course, that is a free decision. Up to you where you want to put it. Um, yeah. So for creating a slider, for using it, we have to make one first. Therefore, I will just make a global slider and that is right click in our hierarchy UI element. That's the first UI element we are using. And there we have so-called slider elements. A slider is both an input and an output element. So it can be used for, for regulating like a volume or difficulty or whatever, just a slider. Or it can be used for displaying an information like our cooldown or health or mana or something like that. So let's add a slider. This will automatically create a canvas. The canvas is the element that carries all of our UI elements that we just see blank on the screen. Those are not real 3D objects. They are just two dimensional objects in a three dimensional room. Yeah, this will need some setup because as we see it right now, <laughs> Wow, that is a huge slider that we have here. So if I click on the slider, hit F, you see it is pretty huge. It seems to be pretty huge, but if you hit play, if you go into the game, you will see it is actually the opposite. Does anyone see it? Oh yeah, it's right here. This is where the slider automatically goes. It is in our UI. And that is what this canvas does. Standard wise, the canvas, it looks like it's really huge, but that is because we have set it to a screen overlay. Screen overlay means it is always on top of the screen that we see as the player, right? <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to put this right now into the world space. If we put it in the world space, we'll get a warning that is not too important right now. Um, and I hit F on the slider, you see nothing has changed. The, the, the difference right now is if I hit play now, the slider is right there where we left it. So it's pretty huge. Uh, of course, now we can change the position and everything of it. Therefore, we have those two elements, the canvas and the slider. The slider actually consists of multiple elements. We'll get to that in a second. What we want to do is if you hit F on the canvas, you see it is even bigger. And now we need our so-called rect tool. The rect tool is whenever we work with 2D elements or with um, UI elements, it is nice. It's a rectangle tool. It just gives us the size of this as well. What I want to do is, of course, we want to limit this to the slider bar. But you see, when I change the size of the canvas of, of the overlaying UI element, you see the slider changes the position as well. That is kind of stupid. Because the slider itself, if you click on it, it's got some pivot, it's got some uh, positioning, it is somewhere, it is right now, if you see this, this means center and middle, it is actually located, it is always keeping the same position in contrast to the center of the overlaying element, which is the canvas. So if that center here, the little blue dot there, right in the center changes, the slider also changes the position in contrast to that point, right? So what we could do now very simply is we can grab the slider and put it exactly on that point. And that's what we're going to do. So if you click on here, you can just set what is it orienting at? And that's what I'm doing now. And we want to, it to orient at the center. But if you hit Alt, Alt, you see, we also set the position, right? So if I hit Alt, boink, now if I go back to my canvas, you see that the slider is actually in the center of the whole canvas. What I want to do now is make the canvas so that it kind of overlays the slider a little bit, something like this. Uh, that's it. Right. That's what we want to do. 
of course, what we also want to do is put that whole canvas, right? That whole canvas, I will, uh, I will also rename the slider to, uh, let's give it a good name, jump cooldown. And I want that element, of course, on top of the player. So we are going to scale it down. So let's get our scale tool out and let's actually scale it down by a lot. And let's just bring it to the player. You can also set the position up here, zero, zero, right? That will bring it to the zero position that our player is currently in because I haven't changed it. What I want to do is, of course, this canvas should be um, should depend on the position of the player. So let's put it on the player, and you see that slightly changed. There we go. It's in the zero position of the player. So let's put it a bit in front of the player. Let's put it a bit down. Let's scale it by hitting R, right? I want to make it smaller. I want to also make it smaller on this side. And now we've got like this little uh, graph on top of the player. Let's push it up a little bit so I can see it on the player. Let's make it a bit more wide, something like this. And that is our slider. Let's make that, whoops, no, that, oh, that was correct. Whoops, Control Z. <clears throat> so now there's still a couple of things wrong with the slider, right? Um, if you click on it again, the jump cooldown, that has a slider element. You can change the value of the slider element, right? To see what's actually happening. And that is exactly what's going to happen. If the cooldown is not ready at all, it's zero. If the cooldown is ready, it's one. Right? And that is exactly what's going to happen. So push that somewhere in the center here. Let's change how it looks like. We've got the background, we've got the fill area, and we've got the handle uh, area, right? The first of all, because we're not going to use the handle, you can deactivate it by making it not interactable. Let's make it not interactable so you cannot manually change it in the game. And then the disabled color, let's change the alpha value to zero so we cannot see the handle anymore because that's not needed. Okay, next thing that is kind of strange, if you put that now to 100%, which means value one, you see there's still a little gap in the end. So go to the fill area, go to our fill, and you will see there is a little gap. And we can just, you see, we can just do that a little bit, hmm. stretching it out, Control Z. Um, that is the upper, that is this fill area, I'm sorry, that is this fill area, which we want to stretch for from five to also five, because that is the setting that we have on the other cooldown as well, on the global one. And now you see the fill area actually goes from zero to maximum. Nice. Okay, so those were two changes. Maybe also the fill area, the fill, that's why I selected it. You can give it another color. So when, maybe let's give it a nice green or something so that the fill that we see or yellow is usually stamina jumping and stuff is yellowish. So when we actually are having our cooldown, we see it with a yellow bar. If you want to deactivate the background, you can also deactivate the background image here and stuff. Up to you. There's, there's a lot you can do with this slider alone. What we, of course, want to do is this slider. Right now, I controlled the, the value manually. That is wrong. Of course, this slider is controlled by the jump script. So on our player, in the player movement, we have our jump. Right? We have our jump somewhere from the last time, exactly from the last time. Uh, that is already there <laughs> because I prepared. Um, what we want to add is here a public, the slider element that we just created. But if you make public slider, it doesn't exist. What you need to add first is you need to use the unity engine.ui, which is all the UI stuff that you want, including a slider element. As you see, we have it now. And that is our jump slider. Save this, and of course, now the thing we need to do back in Unity is we need to add the jump slider on here. You can just, because we only have one slider, search for it, and there we just have the jump cooldown done. Okay, last thing, pretty simple actually, the jump slider, right? Let's go to our jump, yeah, that's our jumping area, and here I want to see the jump slider should change the value. And we can just do jump slider dot value because that is the field. We can also change the minimum value, maximum value and everything. The value, the current value, so from zero to one, right, should be dependent of course on our jump CD and our 
uh, on our current jump CD and cooldown and on our maximum jump cooldown. And that is, of course, our current jump cooldown divided by the maximum jump cooldown, which will bring, bring the value between a value from 0 to 1, dependent on those two values. Um, let's see. Let's link this. Everything's fine. So now if I actually jump, you see it is like recharging. And whenever it's full, I can jump. That's pretty cool. So we've got this slider. The last thing, we, because we still have a couple of seconds left, the last thing I want to change is as well when the bar is full. So when we are not on a cooldown, I don't want to display it. So let's do the following. Jump slider. Uh, let's do an if statement. If... Uh, jump slider, oops, slider value is greater or equal to one. Oops. Then we want to display the gra the slider. If not, we don't want to display it. So else. So then jump slider dot game object because that's the overlaying game object of the jump slider. We just want to deactivate it. Set active to false. We are going to deactivate the jump slider. If we're not on a cooldown and we take this and put it in the else statement, and then true. We want to reactivate it when it is on a cooldown. So let's see how that looks like, because now we have a nice cooldown. And you see, when we're not on a cooldown, we don't see it. When we're on a cooldown, we actually don't see it. This can, of course, be used for everything. We can make take this further and further and further, but for now, that's it to sliders. Very simple, very basic. Um, those will be used in UI in a lot of places. Health, uh, ammunition, basically everything. <laughs> a very nice element. Um, yeah, if you've got questions, just leave them in the comments below. If this video was any helpful, if you liked it, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for joining and bye-bye.